Kia ora. This is the first question that I'm going to do from this year's integration exam, and it's the one about liquid chocolate. So I've got a lovely picture of liquid chocolate here, here for you. By the time you finish this question, you might need some liquid chocolate. Um, actually, it's not too bad. You just have to go slowly. Now, I haven't checked this one with my friends at school, um, so I'm hoping I've got it right, but I know that someone on here will tell me quickly if I've stuffed it up. So let's have a look at it. We've got a cake factory and it's got a container of liquid chocolate used to make cakes. It's pumped out of the container, so the rate of change of the volume of liquid chocolate remaining is proportional to the square of the volume of liquid chocolate remaining. The rate of change. Okay, after one hour of use on a particular day, the volume remaining is P litres, and after a further one hour, there are only four fifths of P litres left in the container. So we have to write a DE and solve it to figure out how much liquid chocolate started out in the container at the start of the day. So just working slowly through it, we've got the um, fact about the rate of change here. So dV by dt is going to equal k times v squared. Let's just think of that, about that before we get going. v is going to be a positive number, um, but we know that the volume is um, dropping, so k will end up being negative. It's fine if you wrote this as negative kv squared. In that case, you'll end up with k being positive, and it will all come out in the end anyway. What else do we know? Well, we know that when t equals 1, v is equal to p, and when t is equal to 2, v is equal to 4 fifths of p. And we have to figure out when t is equal to 0, what is v? Okay, they haven't told us that we need to get right through and make it explicitly v equals blah, 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 but that's what I'm going to do in this problem. So let's just start with um, our usual trick, which is separating the variables. We've got 1 over v squared dv is equal to k dt. So the right-hand side is looking pretty good. Um, with this, I'm going to be really careful and just turn that into a negative power. And on this side, I'm going to have kt plus c. Integrating the left-hand side gives me v to the negative 1 times negative 1, so just check that back. When we differentiate that, we're going to end up with v to the negative 2. Um, so this is equal to kt plus c. Writing that out without the negative power, I get negative 1 over v is equal to kt plus c. Okay, now I'm going to substitute in the two things that we know. I've got two constants that I have to work out, and I've got two pieces of information. So we should be okay from here. So we've got at t equals 1, um, negative 1 over p is equal to k plus c. And at t equals 2, we've got negative 1 over 4 fifths p, which is a bit messy, is equal to 2k plus c. So looking at this, hopefully you see pretty quickly that if we do um, this equation, take away this equation, we'll be able to eliminate c and get a value for k. So that's what I'm going to do now, but first I'll get rid of the gross green highlighter. There we go, it's gone. Um, I'm also going to rewrite the second one as negative 5 over 4p is equal to 2k plus c. I'm going to call that one equation 2 and that one equation 1. So equation 2 minus equation 1 gives me negative 5 over 4p minus negative 1 over p is equal to 2k plus c minus k plus c. Getting a common denominator here gives me 4p in the denominator. Negative 5 plus 4 is equal to k. So negative 1 over 4p is equal to k. All right, that means that I can now go back and put that in to what we had up here. So let's just substitute the value of k in up here. Um, I'm going to do that underneath it. So we have negative 1 over v is equal to negative 1 over 4p times t plus c. So we've got this. Now we've somehow got to figure out what c is. Well, we can go back to using the fact that at t equals 1, v is equal to p, and that's now going to give me a way to find c. 
So negative 1 over v is equal to negative 1 over 4p plus c, except that I should have substituted p in here for v. Now we have negative 1 over p plus 1 over 4p is equal to c. Again, getting a common denominator, I get negative 4 plus 1 is equal to c. That gives me negative 3 over 4p is equal to c. So we're just about there. That gives me back into our original equation here. Negative 1 over v is equal to negative 1 over 4p t minus 3 over 4p. Now by this stage, a couple of things are really annoying me. I, I wish I'd got rid of those negative signs earlier, but I didn't, and I don't like having v in the denominator. So we're going to fix all of that up now, but we're basically there, right? What we have to do now is to substitute in t equals 0. So if you were in a Russian exam and you stopped here, I think that's totally fine. But this is just, it just looks a bit gross with all the negatives. So let's rewrite it like this. Okay, that makes me feel better already. And now you can see again, we've got a common denominator. And the common denominator here is 4p. So I've got t plus 3. Taking the reciprocal of both sides, I get v is equal to 4p over t plus 3. Um, all we need to do now is to say, well, what happens when t is equal to 0? We get v is equal to 4p over 3, which is equal to 4 thirds of p. So there you go. Um, as t gets very big, so that's the question done, um, but you can just think about what's going on in here. As t goes to infinity, t plus 3 goes to infinity, and that means that 4p over t plus 3 will go towards 0. All right, but it will never get completely empty. There will always be a tiny bit of liquid chocolate left in the vat, which anyone who's ever done baking knows is, is very similar to real life. Okay, I really like this question. It's um, just a bit different with the chocolate instead of like water or coffee or something. Um, I hope that that is all good. Please um, let me know if it's not. And as I said, there would you could have done slightly different things along the way. Like you could have made v the subject earlier and dealt with the negative signs but i think that's probably how i would have done it on the day in the exam um, i'll do some more of the integration ones tomorrow so let me know um, if you've got any special requests that you want to see done